Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining our JCU webinar series with today's presentation focusing on the postgraduate courses available in public health. My name is Susan Hatherall. I'm one of the future student advisors at JCU and I'll be your MC today. I'd like to start today with an acknowledgement to country. We acknowledge Australian Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people as the first inhabitants of this country, and we pay our respects to the traditional owners of the land on which we stand today. In the spirit of reconciliation, we also acknowledge the valuable contribution that Australian Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people continue to make to James Cook University and the broader community. Before we get to our panellists, I just want to do a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. So if you have any questions during the presentation, please type them in the Q&A box uh, in your Zoom control panel, and I'll address these with our speakers as they arise. Alternately, we have some people who are answering questions as well, so they may just answer you in the chat. So on to our panelists. So of course, I'm your MC today. My name is Susan. Um, we also have joining us Dr. Sue Devine. She is an Associate Professor and Academic Head of Public Health and Tropical Medicine at James Cook University. She has a strong background in public health and health promotion and holds a Doctor of Public Health, Master of Public Health and Tropical Medicine, and a Postgraduate Diploma in Health Promotion and a graduate certificate in tertiary teaching, as well as having many years of practical experience. Sue has worked in the higher education area for over 20 years and currently teaches across a broad range sorry, of public health related areas, but her main area of focus is on health promotion. We also have Hannah Mason joining us. Hannah is a lecturer, researcher and HDR student at the College of Public Health, Medical and Veterinary Sciences. Hannah graduated from the Master of Public Health, Master of Business Administration program at James Cook University in 2019. Since this time, Hannah has worked on a broad range of public health and safety research projects, including exploring the impact of heat waves on health systems, arc flash safety, and rural road safety. Hannah's research interests include health systems management, climate-related resilience, and rural and remote health. So we'll start today with Dr. Sue Devine, who is going to talk to us a little bit more about uh, what we have to ho offer here at JCU for uh, postgraduate students interested in public health. Great, that's um, lovely. Thank you very much, Susan, for that introduction. And um, it's really great to have an opportunity to talk to you today about our postgraduate programs. Um, what I thought I'd do is just start um, by talking a little bit about the history because it's quite interesting to think about how we've evolved and then I'll go on and actually talk about the courses we offer, what you need to get into them, um, the sort of subjects that you will study if you do um, one of our courses and then just talk a little bit about the staff expertise we have, how we embed research into our teaching and I'm going to finish by sharing with you some of our wonderful alumni. So um, we've got a really interesting history here. The masters of, or well, the postgraduate masters programs have been running since 1992. And they started because at the time, um, Professor Rick Spear, who you can see in the picture there, who has the beard, was doing research in public health and tropical medicine areas. And there was interest in starting postgraduate education. And he recruited um, a doctor from the Kimberley, Professor Ian Ronsky, who came over and headed up public health and tropical medicine. And he, together with Rick and, and his wife, Maggie, they came up with this idea to start a master of public health and tropical medicine. That was really visionary because what it, it's actually at that time, it was the only MPHTM in Australia and it continues to be the only MPHTM in Australia. And it's actually only one of um, two in the world. The other one's offered in Tulane University at, um, in New Orleans. But that has been really instrumental, I think, in the success that we've had in the postgraduate education space because it gave us that uniqueness that is very different to other programs um, offered by other universities. There's a lot of MPH programs in Australia and they're fantastic, really good quality. 
But because of our focus on tropical medicine, it really attracted a particular group of people who were looking for something perhaps a little bit more unique and different. And of course, it fits beautifully with the ethos of who we are at JCU. We're about improving the lives of people in the tropics. So it was very well aligned to that strategic intent of our university. So um, it started really small in 1992. I think there was only about 12 students that started at that time in the MPHTM. And then it rapidly grew actually to now where we've actually, I think we've got over 800 students on our books now doing our various master's programs. They're not all studying full time. They often are working and studying um, part time but it's a really large postgraduate program and has had very stable enrolments now for many years. Um, so let's look at what we actually offer. So we offer, we, we started with the MPHTM and then we evolved over time to offer some further postgraduate offerings. So we now offer four different master's level courses, the Master of Public Health and Tropical Medicine. We also offer a generic master's of public health because we recognise that some people were not necessarily wanting that tropical um, flavour. So, you know, having a, just the named MPH was probably um, more appealing to them. And then we offer two dual degrees, a Master of Public Health, Masters of Business Administration, and Hannah is one of our graduates and she's going to talk about her experiences in that shortly. And we also offer a Master of Public Health and a Masters of Global Development. So the first two, the MPHTM and the MPH are 18 months courses where the other dual degrees are two year courses because you're really combining two different, quite different areas into um, that one, one degree. We also offer two grad dips, so a grad dip in public health and tropical medicine, grad dip in tropical medicine and hygiene. The subjects, the core subjects are very similar because we want it to sort of, that they all build into each other. Likewise, we have um, four, master, uh, four grad certs as well. So the grad cert of public health, for example, could, if you started in a grad cert, you could build up to a grad dip if you wanted to, you know, do more, or you could build it into a master's. So sometimes we also have people who enrol in a master's, but then decide because of life circumstances, they want to withdraw early. So they could withdraw with a grad cert of public health. The other um, grad certs we offer are quite unique. We offer a graduate certificate of error medical retrieval. It's very much designed to attract people who want to work in that aeromedical retrieval space. So, for example, working with Care Flight or um, RFDS, those sort of organisations. So people coming into that grad cert really do need to already have some experience in a critical care area. And it's a fantastic course. Um, it's one of only two in Australia. The other one's offered up in Darwin. And we've been running that, I think, since about 2007. And just this weekend past, we ran a three-day intensive for one of the subjects and you know, had amazing faculty come on campus to teach our students. And, and it just reminded me what an exciting opportunity that is for students to really learn from people working in the area and, and really be, you know, get inspired about the opportunities to work in that space. We also offer a grad cert of travel medicine and a grad cert um, of disaster health and humanitarian assistance. So they're again, quite unique offerings, but they can all be, you know, if you start off at that grad cert level, you can build them into either a grad dip or a master of public health, master of public health, tropical medicine. So what do you need to get into the course? Well, it's interesting because what, in some ways, MPH is, often will uh, attract a very broad range of people because it's very, you know, public health is a very multidisciplinary area. Lots of different people from different backgrounds end up working in that space. But what we've found at JCU is probably about 80% of our students are doctors, nurses or allied health professionals. And our entry requirements do state that you do need um, an Australian qualification framework level seven, which is a bachelor's degree in a relevant health discipline. Um, but every now and again, we will take people in from other disciplines as well. So for example, I remember a few years ago, we had someone who had a marine science background. You think, oh, that's a bit weird. You know, why would they be interested in public health? But they were someone who'd been working for a non-government organization um, overseas for a number of uh, years in a health-related role. 
So it made sense that they could come in and, and thrive in the course and do really well. So every now and again, we will accept people outside that health area as well. Um, we do you know, look at um, other things like you know, your, your qualifications um, and your, your um, success at uni um, and academic performance. Sometimes we look at prior work experience, but usually if you've got an undergrad degree, you will get accepted into the program. And of course, we do have Commonwealth supported places available for all people doing the Masters of Public Health programs. So um, let's now have a look at what it looks like in terms of the subjects that you'll study um, if you get involved, uh, enrolled in one of our courses. So for the MPH and the MPHTM, as I said, they're one and a half years if you study them full time, but you actually have up to eight years to do these courses. And you'll do 12 subjects um, in those two degrees. If you do the dual degree, you do 16 subjects and they go over two years. And then with the grad dips, there's eight subjects. The grad certs have four subjects. The core subjects in the masters are there on the screen. You can have a look. There's an introductory tropical public health subject that really introduces you to a whole broad range of co um, concepts around public health and different areas, you know, really to get you interested in and really starting to understand what public health is all about. We then have subjects in epi and, um, bio, epidemiology and biostatistics. So I think after living through COVID, everyone now speaks epidemiology, but it's such a core part of what public health work is all about. And so understanding those concepts is really important. We um, also run a management subject, uh, it's called public health management, leadership, planning and policy, because again, having those broader skills in leadership and planning and really understanding how policy impacts on public health work is very, very important. Communicable disease control is a core part of what public health is all about. And again, you know, thinking back to COVID, um, where we had to manage that, you know, significant outbreak, out, outbreak of an infectious disease, but there'll be other diseases that will come along, other diseases that we've, you know, had to manage those outbreaks previously, like Ebola, et cetera. Um, and then... If you so they are the sort of five, um, five main subjects for VMPH. If you do the MPHTM, you also do tropical medicine as a core subject. And then if you do the MPH MBA, you also do public health economics. And if you do the MPH um, MGD, you do global health and development. So, but really, you know, it's those main subjects: tropical public health, epi, biostats public health management and communicable disease, which is the core to all the master's programs. We very much design the subjects around meeting the Council of Academic Public Health Institutions of Australia's core competencies. And so they sort of say, these are the knowledge and skills that we would expect an MPH graduate to have. So we make sure that our subjects allow you to meet those competencies. And then there's a whole range of elective subjects. And in all honesty, I think it's the elective subjects that really attract many students to our program. You know, there's really um, you know, exciting subjects like refugee health and disaster health management and expedition and wilderness medicine, you know, things that are quite different. And then there's things like health promotion or, or areas you know, where people might want to tailor their electives to work in specific areas. We also offer research subjects. So for some people, they would like to do a significant research project within their masters. And that's a really good option for those people who are particularly interested perhaps in progressing at a later stage into a PhD. And Hannah is a great example of someone who's done that. And I'm sure she'll talk to you about that in a moment. Um, next, we'll go on to the next slide, please. So we, have a fantastic team of you know I am so proud of the people who work in our team and you can see there's a fantastic photo of them there not only are they really good at public health stuff but they're pretty talented in the art field as well this was a team building activity we did a couple of years ago but um you know we we really look at our staff mix you know the reality is we're a small university so we can't have massive teams and lots of staff so we're very careful that not only do we have staff who are paid and working with us, but we also bring along a much wider faculty for our adjuncts. And that's us using our contacts with profession, uh, other professional bodies, industry, bringing those people into our teaching team so that they can really share 
their experiences in a very authentic way and really enthuse students about the topics that are being taught. So we have, you know, staff expertise, of course, in EPI and Biostats, um, really important part of, you know, what you'll learn. Uh, quite a few staff have extensive experience in health promotion or health systems, in management. Obviously, tropical medicine expertise is really important. So having people, you know, clinicians who've worked in TropMed, but also parasitologists, some of those lab sort of people, medical entomology. We have people who've um, worked for organisations like Medicine Sans Frontiers and Red Cross who really understand the refugee health area, disaster health, public health emergencies, those sort of areas. People who've worked, um, you know, responding to outbreaks of disease, so really understand communicable disease control. Um, so, you know, really broad uh, skill set with, um, within our staff. Um, we'll move on to the next slide. And one of the things that we think is really important is when you're teaching postgraduate subjects and postgraduate courses, it's very important to embed research within the content that we're teaching. So all of our staff are very actively engaged in research. We, we are doing a whole lot of um, research on many topics, but things around tropical health. We do a lot around injury. We're probably the leading um, university now doing drowning research under the guidance of Professor Richard Franklin. We do stuff around health systems. A lot of that's in an international context under the guidance of Professor um, Stephanie Top. And we do a lot of stuff around social determinants and health promotion as well. And so we, you know, we do lots of supervision of students doing um dissertations within the masters, but you know, really trying to bring that research and also people's practical field experience into the subject. So you know, we have staff who go off and do WHO consultancies, but it all really brings a greater authenticity, but also a stronger evidence base to the content that we're teaching. So we encourage our staff to be very engaged sort of locally because you know local issues are important, but also nationally, you know, collaborating with broader people across Australia, but also internationally as well. And so as a result of that, you know, we just have some of the most amazing alumni who work in the most incredible places. I remember I'm I'm a graduate of this program. I did an MPHTM here at JCU. And I remember when I started it, I, I had a clinical background. I'd been working in ICU and CCU. So quite, you know, those um, sort of high energy areas in a hospital setting. And then I did my MPHTM and it opened up this whole new world of opportunities for work for me. And, you know, I couldn't, it was so exciting meeting other people, other students who often had so much experience, but they were still furthering their professions through further study. And many of those students, I mean, these are JCU alumni of the year. So these, these people are highly impressive. But you, know, you can have a look at them, um, you know, Jess, I won't go through each and every one of them, but it shows that people go on to um, work in incredibly high-level leadership roles. Um, people like Professor Adrian Miller, he actually worked with us as well. He's ended up being a DVC in a university. People work for the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, um, St John's Ambulance. At one point during COVID, I think five of the chief health officers had all done the MPHTM at Australia, we're at JCU, and we couldn't believe it. But, you know, that, you know really, really interesting um, roles that they play. A lot of people do work internationally overseas for organisations like MSF as well. Um, so, look, that's just a really quick summary of, you know, I mean, you, these people really are extraordinary, but, you know, these are, you know, th these are just a few examples of the area, you know, people who go on to work in very interesting public health, tropical medicine related areas. And I thought I'd just finish by showing you a few photos of our amazing students. And, um, you know, it's really interesting. Uh, students historically have always been nervous about doing subjects like epi and biostats because it's quite, you know, it's a lot of statistics and it's got quite a lot of maths involved. But we find as a result of the amazing support that our staff give students, including Hannah, who's part of that epi research team, um, they you know really embrace those subjects and really enjoy them. And so there's a few pictures there of um, you know, people who've done an epidemiology block, a biostatistics block, um, a few other examples of other subjects. And of course, there's a photo there of the aeromedical retrieval students with the helicopter. One thing I did mean to mention is that 
the way we do deliver subjects is sometimes you can do them totally externally. So in fact, you can do the whole course externally, but we also run these intensives and that's where these photos come from, where you come on campus and you might spend anywhere between three days and two weeks, depending on how the subject is structured, where you come and actually learn on campus, you get to meet the other students and you can you know, cover quite a lot of the content of that subject while you're actually on campus. So lots of different ways that you can do the course, that you can structure it. Most of our students we find are working. So we're very flexible in how many subjects you do. Some people only do one subject, maybe two subjects a semester. So lots, lots of flexibility. Um, I think I'll leave it there. So thank you very much. And I'm very happy to take questions um, at the end of the webinar. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Sue. There's a lot of information there and it um, was very interesting. I didn't know some of those courses existed, so that's fantastic. Um, I'd like to introduce now Hannah Mason, who is um, a current lecturer at JCU, but also is one of our alumni. And she's going to talk about her experience studying in the public health uh, college. Thank you so much, Susan, for the introduction. And thank you, Sue, um, for all of the nods in my direction. I'm very happy to be here today to talk about my journey as a student and, and now a member of the staff on the public health team. So I'd like to start about uh, where I started before I got to JCU. So I'm I'm originally from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. If you don't know where that is, um, here's a map showing you how Far I had to travel across the ocean to end up here in Townsville. Um, when I was in Edmonton, I undertook my undergraduate study at the University of Alberta, uh, and I did a Bachelor of Nutrition in Food Science, which was a really interesting course. Um, I did a minor in human ecology, um, which if you don't know about human ecology, it's, it's about the relationships between humans and their natural, social, and built environments. Um, so that, of course, all ties in nicely with the social determinants of health. And I really did love the healthcare aspects of the nutrition course, but it just wasn't quite the, the right fit for me at the time. And I was looking for something a little bit different. Um, my favorite courses in, the, in that program were when we were talking about kind of nutrition across the lifespan and again, kind of the human interactions with health. Um, that was really what appealed to me. Um, and then on the other side, I, I also really loved leadership and management and public speaking. So at a time, I kind of thought maybe the right move for me would be to transition into business, but I really love the healthcare side. Um, so while I was kind of humming and hawing about where this was going to take me, uh, I obtained a, a position at the Okanagan Similkameen um, Center for Child and Youth Development. And within that role, I got to work with uh, amazing families uh, with children with, with complex needs and work with a team of allied health professionals, speech language pathologists and occupational therapists and um, physios. And it was a really, really great, interesting role. And I got to get some kind of hand on ex hands on experience um, talking with families and how their environments were influencing their access to health care. And I thought, OK, this is what I really, really love to do. Um, so next, I would love to talk about kind of my decision to study at JCU. So um, I sought a program that could kind of combine these interests in organizational management and healthcare. Um, and I didn't really know what that could look like. I didn't know that an MPH MBA program existed. So I started to do a little bit of, of Googling. Of course, that's where a lot of us start when we're trying to figure out um, where our next journey will take us. Um, and I noticed that in Canada, my options were to take two separate master's programs, which would have totaled four years of study. So I would have had to take the MB MBA uh, completely separate to the MPH. And at the time, I, I wasn't too interested in doing another four years of study. Then I started um, kind of looking towards Australia and the MBA MPH dual degree, which I thought, oh, this is great. I could get both done uh, within two years. 
And then I started uh, looking into JCU and looking at the values of JCU and where JCU was on, on the map and um, what kind of the environment is like. And tropical medicine, of course, as a girl from Edmonton, Alberta, was very foreign to me, but um, something I was definitely interested in. Um, and as a Canadian, we have a lot of ties with, with the Canadian healthcare system and the Australian healthcare system and rural remote health and Indigenous health. So all of those reasons kind of led me to thinking, wow, JCU might, might be the right fit for me. And then, of course, lastly, Canada is very cold. And I thought, what a great way to leave the cold and head into the tropics um, <laughs> by applying to JCU and was very thrilled um, when, when I found out I was accepted and started my journey. So next, I would like to talk about my my experience while I was here at JCU. So as uh, Sue had mentioned, uh, primarily the subjects are external um, and you could undertake the whole subject externally um, provided you're a domestic student. Uh, however, the magic really happens in the in the intensives and the block modes. So uh, these are my favorite memories. The picture on the slide here of me in full the full PPE kit. Uh, this was in the CDC course where we learned about infection control with uh, Lars Henning, who you'll know and meet uh, if you end up here at JCU. Um, and I think this is just an example of, of all of the, you know, there's such such vast um, subject matter here at JCU. Um, one day you'll be in full PPE. The next day, you know, as Sue was talking about, there's the air medical retrieval course. Um, there's just so many things going on. So uh, really lovely. Um, and the next day you're learning about programming in R. So there's just so many different um, learning experiences and it always keeps you on your toes. Uh, so within these block weeks, I had really great networking opportunities. I have um, some contacts now who are working within disaster health, who I've run into at conferences, other, other contacts that have gone on to very different roles, but we still keep in touch. Um, some who I've linked with on different research projects. So the networking opportunities um, that are provided mostly in these, in these block weeks. So if you're not, not familiar what a block or intensive mode subject is, it normally runs for a specific amount of time, usually, you know, a few days to two weeks. Um, and you come for from nine to four ish each day uh, and you get to kind of smash out your subject in those two weeks. But you get to meet everybody face to face and then you go home and sometimes continue on to finish um, whatever assessments are kind of due afterward. Um, but it's a really great way to kind of focus on a single subject and um, really get your head in to the game. So that was my my favorite part um, of the degree. Um, so yeah, so great networking opportunities. Um, you end up getting some best friends out of it, which is, of course, always a bonus um, with both your fellow students and as well as as the lecturers. Um, everybody here is a really great team and really enthusiastic. And uh, I would like to say we all have a pretty good sense of humor as well, which makes things a lot more enjoyable. Um, so then, uh, well, as I was taking my courses, I had to decide on my electives. Um, and I had a meeting with Sue and I was talking about how I felt like a bit of a kid in, in the candy store because there's just so many interesting things going on. And we started talking about career progression and kind of where I wanted to end up. So Sue um, said to me that I should speak with uh, Professor Richard Franklin, who is now my my current um, HDR supervisor. Um, spoiler alert. But uh, so she, she encouraged me to go talk to him about what options there are for research subjects. Um, and there's there's different, uh, there's a three, a six, and a nine credit dissertation. Um, I undertook the six credit, and uh, Richard took me under his wing, um, and we had a great experience together. I did some research on rural road fatalities, and um, we were really able to meld my interests as well, um, and we did some comparisons between Canada and Australia, um, which was really interesting. So that that research subject uh, really molded kind of my journey and where I've ended up today. So 
Uh, and then the last thing is just the, the class size and the support from the lecturers. So when we come into these intensive courses, there's usually about 30 students. Um, I came from the University of Alberta where we had, you know, sometimes 400 students in a given course, and I didn't really get um, those great connections and um, memories across my peers and also lecturers. And I think that um, the nice tight knit university is really an asset of JCU. Um, you feel as a student that you can come and talk to to your lecturers and professors and ask them questions and um, it's not so so intimidating and scary and I think that really adds to the learning experience so um, certainly when I came to do my master's I I found it was a world of difference um, in comparison to my undergraduate experience and I definitely owe that to the teaching he team here uh, in public health. So next I'll talk to you about my after, my before and after. So uh, after I finished my, my degree, um, COVID hit. So that was of course very timely for um, finishing CDC, I think within five months um, of the pandemic. So uh, I had finished up some research with Richard and um, some great opportunities presented to me. I really loved epidemiology and biostatistics. Um, they were, my favorites. Uh, and so I was lucky that um, Professor Ike had invited me to join the team. Um, and I started work as a tutor and leading some tutorials here in Townsville. Um, I also started a working with Professor Richard Franklin on um, some heat waves research where we're looking at the impact of heat waves um, across the state of Queensland on health service demand. Um, and I had a whole I could I could go on forever with all of the other lists of opportunities. I did some marking in different courses, um, some tutoring in different courses. I was invited to go onto the um, medical selection panel, which was a really interesting experience. Um, and I found, I think, the closeness of the university, of course, of the, the public health team, but also the broader university, just lent to a wealth of, of opportunities for me, which I'm very thankful for. Um, so ultimately, after much conversation with Richard, um, he, him and I discussed uh, starting a PhD. So uh, I began my PhD journey last year uh, in 2022, February. And we're exploring the impact of climate related disasters on aged care facilities and um, really excited we're, we're doing some cross country comparisons between Canada and Australia so I, I think the point of that is just what you're interested in I think um, people are quite open here if you find someone who has something similar interest and in, you can kind of tailor your research and play on strengths and it's just a really cool dynamic team. Um, environment that happens here. And I don't know if I would have ever even thought about doing a PhD before I came to JCU, but um, the way that kind of things happened and the, the support I received is the reason that that I am now here and talking to you about this. Um, and I am now uh, working, still working with the, the biostats and epidemiology team. So you will certainly see me again <laughs> and recognize, oh, that was that girl from that webinar. Uh, if you come and join us, which we would love for you to do. Um, so that's all I have to share today. And I'm, of course, happy to answer some questions. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Hannah. That's fantastic. And a lot of information there that I'm sure is really helpful to the people who are in attendance today. So um, we're going to take some time now to actually answer any questions that people have. So if you do have any questions, as I said, pop them in the chat and uh, we can answer those for you. Um, but I do have a couple of questions um, and I will start with Sue. Um, just for students who are thinking about doing some postgraduate study. So if they haven't studied for a while and are a bit nervous about how different uh, university education is now since they last studied, um, will there be support uh, if they need it or what kind of support do we offer students who are starting their postgrad journey? Uh, thank you, Susan. I think that's a really good question um, because we get people enrolling in our courses with all sorts of backgrounds. Some people 
are fairly new grads. So they're sort of kind of used to the way things work in universities these days. And then we get people who are highly experienced health professionals who may not have studied for 10 or even longer years. And for those people, I think it's really intimidating. We are absolutely aware of how things have changed so much in the university, um, the way we deliver courses. I remember when I studied, uh, I was um, doing a lot of flying, doing outreach rural work at the time. I used to fly everywhere with my hard copies. These days, everything is online. And so it can be intimidating, but we are there to help support you. We will walk, walk you through the Learn JCU platform, which is the platform that we use to put all our learning materials on. We are always open to um, people asking questions. Many of the subjects have tutors um, working with students. So Hannah gave the example of tutoring in EPI and Biostat. So it means that students can actually go to the tutors and ask for that extra um, support if they need. So yeah, don't be intimidated. It is, it is a bit scary, but we will make sure that you're okay. And please, you know, I mean, we try to really make it clear that we are really wanting people to make, you know, contact with us and we don't want people to struggle and sit there and feel that they can't ask questions. So you'll be fine. Thanks, Sue. I'm just going to stick with you. We've had a question come through from Sarah. She was just wondering, what is the time commitment per week for the Masters in Public Health and the Masters in Global Development? Yeah, look, thank you, Sarah, for that question. So we um, we say that for every subject that you enrol in, it's approximately about 10 hours of work a week. So if you're doing um, four subjects a semester, which is a full-time study load, you know, it's, it's like working full-time in a job, really, you know, probably 36 to 40 hours a week. Now, some weeks you'll find you won't do that much. And other weeks, you might do a bit more. So if you've got assessment coming up, you might find that you're actually, you know, working really hard. But um, yeah, on average, a, a subject, we say a subject that is delivered over 13 weeks is equivalent to 130 hours. So it's about 10 hours a week. Um, and again, people do, so, you know, sometimes they'll only do one subject, sometimes they'll do two. If they're studying full time, they'll do four subjects in a semester. Thanks, Sue. Hannah, um, my next question is for you. What would be your tip to give to someone thinking about doing um, postgrad study to balance their work, social life and study? Sure, great question. I think from an international perspective, it's probably a little bit different from a domestic perspective. Um, when I came here um, as an international student, I, I was enrolled in full-time study. So for me, um, that was kind of the main, main game and I was working part-time on the side. I think um, for anyone though, um, and speaking from the experience of the students who I'm teaching now, um, it's all about seeking support when you need support. There's support, great support from peers. There's great support from lecturers. Um, it's about kind of knowing what your time commitments can be like and planning in advance. Um, the subject outlines usually come out um, quite early, so you should be able to look at those and, and have an idea of when things are coming up. Um, and then kind of from there, you can plan out, okay, you know, when's a good time to schedule these kinds of things and these kinds of appointments. Um, so yeah, I think I think preparing and also seeking a great support network so that when inevitably sometimes things get busier than others, uh, that you can lean on some other people or or potentially um, ask for some help when it's needed. Amazing, thank you. And I'm going to stick with you, Hannah. Um, so, is there a specific course sequence in the public health program, or is there flex flexibility? Sorry, in when you decide to take each course. Yeah, thank you. So. Um, I thought, found this was so interesting when I came here coming from a very regimented uh, undergraduate program uh, to pursuing my master's that there, there was a lot of flexibility in the sequence in which you could study. So there, there's certainly some recommendations and um, you'll have a student advisor at JCU who you can ch chat with about kind of what would work best for you and your learning um, in terms of when you take each course. But there's there's lots of flexibility. You don't have to take biostats before epi or epi before public health management or anything like that. So you can kind of tailor it not only to your schedule, 
but also to your interests and and potentially your your career development and what works best for you. So um, yeah, there are a few exceptions, but overall it's very flexible. Thanks, Hannah. And I have one more question, um, which I'm going to ask Sue. Um, I'm just wondering what feedback has the university had from employees regarding our graduates? Uh, that's a really um, good question as well. And so <clears throat> I'll give you um, an example, a couple of examples that I think really capture that. Um, during COVID, mm -hmm. I every now and again, I, I was quite in, um, work quite closely with the tropical pub, uh, the public health unit in Townsville, but also up in Cairns. And there was a, a couple of times where I was in those public health units. And what happened during COVID is a lot of people were pulled offline. So if you're a doctor or a nurse um, working or even an allied health professional in, in the health system, you were pulled offline to work in COVID. And one of the things I noticed that a whole lot of people were our graduates mm -hmm. and talking to the public health physicians, they went, oh, it's just fantastic because these guys could just come in and hit the ground running. And I thought that was really great feedback. Another example is we had a staff member um, working for us who when, I think it was in 2014, there was a, an Ebola outbreak in Sierra Leone and there was a call for people to go and help work overseas to respond to that outbreak. And when our staff member went down, she put her hand up, she went down to Canberra for training and she emailed me and she said, you won't believe it, like out of all the people in the room, 80% of these uh, people have done the JCU MPH, mostly the MPH and TM. And so I think it just shows that people feel confident in um, putting, you know, going to work in those sort of situations that do need a particular skill set and knowledge base around public health and, out, you know, communicable disease control and outbreak control. And, but I also think, you know, having that feedback from the public health physicians about how, you know, confident they felt that the people who were, you know, coming to help them were really able to um, you know, do a really good job and, and provide the skills that they were looking for. So I we get really good industry feedback. Um, I work in, mainly in health promotion. So I know a lot of you know, people who um, work in health promotion roles. Um, for example, you know, they we've had staff employed by the primary health networks. And again, you know, that feedback like, oh, these guys know their stuff, they can really hit the ground running, because that's what you want, you know, when you're employing someone that you can trust them, that they know what to do. So yeah, really good feedback. And I do have one more question that's just come through from Sarah. Um, she was wondering, uh, for placements or internships, are they um, listed by JCU or do we need to seek them out? So do, do students have to set that up themselves or does JCU do that for them? Yeah, so we um, one of our subjects, TM5571, is a placement subject. So it's um, not compulsory because a lot of people you know, don't want to do a placement. But for those who do, we have an MOU with a number of organisations, so public, um, the public health units up here in North Queensland, but also some um, we've got some MOUs down in Canberra in the public health space as well with some of the Aboriginal community controlled health organisations. So sometimes a student will come to us and say, look, I'd really love to do a placement because it will look good on my CV, which it absolutely does. And so... Um, we will work with them to work out, you know, what they're really wanting to get out of that experience and then try and match them with one of the organisations that we have an MOU with. Or sometimes students will come to us and say, I really want to go to this organisation to do a placement. So then we work with that organisation and make sure that that's OK. We set it up. There's certain, you know, um, bits of paperwork that we have to sort out and, and we allow that um, to happen. So, for example, one of our um, MPHTM graduates, actually, I just ran into her in the supermarket on the weekend and she's just doing her last subject now. But I remember she had some relationships with some people who were working in Timor-Leste and she really wanted to do a placement there. So we worked together with that organisation to allow her to do that overseas placement. So it was a really great opportunity for her. So the other thing about placements is we make sure you've done all your core subjects before you go on placement because again we want you to be able to contribute in a really meaningful way um, in that organization that you're doing a placement in and we also 
want us, you know, JCU graduates, you know, or students to be looking really good um, in those organisations. So we make sure that you have, you know, a good set of knowledge and skills to take into that placement. Amazing. Thank you so much. Um, I'd like to finish today just quickly um, highlighting our careers and employability team. So if you are interested in studying, but you're not really sure uh, where you want to go, you can talk to our team here. They offer a free personalised career support to prospective students who are looking to study at JCU. So appointments are tailored to meet your individual needs and they can offer support with all things related to your course and career planning and decision making. So you can follow the links that are on the page in front of you or you can use the QR code and it will take you to their page. Um, appointments can be in person, on campus, online or by phone and it is a fantastic service. If you are interested in studying, they are a really good uh, place to start. Um, I'd like to finish today by highlighting upcoming events and key dates. So tomorrow we are holding another webinar. This time it's going to be on business. Uh, so we'll be looking at uh, undergrad and postgrad. We also have um, a JCU postgraduate information evening happening. We have one in Cairns and one in Townsville. Um, so information on that will be on our events page, which you can see a QR code for on the screen. So if you follow that QR code, you can see all the events that are coming up and register your interest. I would love to thank everyone for attending today. Um, and I would especially like to thank Sue and Hannah for giving us their time, helping us today and giving us some fantastic information that we can uh, think about uh, if we are looking at uh, starting our postgrad journey. Um, I would also like to highlight that when you close the chat today, um, you will be asked to complete a post survey. So a link will open in your browser when you when we conclude the webinar and we would love it if you could uh, fill that out for us just to give us feedback so we can improve on what we're offering um, people who want to find out more about JCU. Um, you can check out our previous webinars, uh, such as the Mature Student and Pathways webinar, and you can also see the recording from yesterday, which we did on our nursing, uh, our nursing subjects. Um, again, thank you very much, everyone, for attending today, and I hope we see you soon at JCU. Thanks. <laughs>